Hello, Kerbal Space Program fans, and uh, do you know what day it is today? Well, at least here in the Philippines. So today is April 12, 2014, and it's the 53rd anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's historic first manned mission into space aboard Vostok 1. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to start a new game. So start new game and we're going to call it Vostok Reenactment. It's going to be a sandbox game and let's find an appropriate flag. Naturally, this is going to be this is going to be a uh, a simulation or a uh, a reenactment of Yuri's flight. So we're going to pick the flag of the USSR or the Soviets. Start a sandbox. So here we are, the Kerbal Space Center. And first, we're going to visit the astronaut complex and look for Yuri. Here he is. He is actually an edited version of good old Jebediah. An approximation of the real Vostok using default Kerbal Space Program parts. And while the bottom part looks a bit like the real Vostok, the top part looks a bit weird. It's not streamlined and we're not really worried about streamlining in Kerbal Space Program because currently the uh, program does not support or does not really simulate atmospheric uh, aerodynamics properly so it's okay to have stuff like these RCS pods sticking out like that or the RCS fuel tanks sticking out like this so let's break down or let's let's examine our vehicle this octagonal part is the uh, the capsule that's where uh, Yuri will stay Yuri Kerman this is its service module, it's a tiny service module and to show you I'm going to remove this part here. So this in effect is the entire uh, Kurtok spacecraft itself. The one that will make the re-entry back to Earth. Over here is the third stage which will push and circularize our orbit around Kerbin. So let's remove this to show you the uh, Kurtok capsule and the third stage. And down here, this huge stack over here, starting from this part down, down, down to here, is the second stage, which has four engines. As you can see, one, no, one, two, three, and four. And surrounding the uh, second stage is the third stage, which is composed of four strap on parallel boosters which mimic uh, the strap on the four strap on boosters of the uh, Vostok space uh, launch vehicle and as you can see I, I tried my best to make it angled inwards to mimic the style of the uh, original Vostok spacecraft and these are the launch clamps which will disengage once we have fired up the engines so we actually have eight engines all in all and if you notice over here these yellow well fuel this lines. part here looks like a chair and yes it's a chair and why is, what's a chair doing on top of the whole assembly well in the real Vostok flight Yuri Gagarin actually did not land on the planet Earth after his orbit inside his spacecraft he actually opened the door while still a few thousand feet several thousand feet up in the air and he jumped out of the spacecraft and parachuted down to the planet Earth. So as an analog of that while this uh, capsule is parachuting down to the Earth we're gonna make Yuri Kerbin or Kerman step out uh, of the, this vehicle climb onto this ladder here and sit on the seat here and it has its own parachute so we can simulate him uh, parachuting down separately from the spacecraft because currently uh, Kerbals don't have their own parachute in their spacesuits 
So this will be his parachute. So here we are, we're back at the Kerbal Space Center. And here's the uh, launch pad, and we're gonna click on it. Here's our mission flag, and we're gonna be assigning Yuri Kerman on this flight. So in three, two, one, launch. Release clamps, and Yuri Kerman is about to go into space. Look at that shadow over there. Look how fast we are ascending. As you can see, uh, these four engines on the strap-on boosters are depleting much faster. The fuel is depleting much faster than the four engines of the main or the second stage, which are found here. Okay, we're approaching 5,000 meters and I can start the pitch maneuver towards the east. Looks like Yuri is pretty excited with the separation maneuver, which will happen in a few seconds from now. And there. Release. And look at that. Just like how the real Vostok shed off its strap-on boosters. Beautiful. And now we're continuing our pitch. We're now at 5,000 or 500 meters per second at 18,000 meters. Let's check the map. Map view. So that we can check the progress of our orbit. Here's the apoapsis at 38. We need to uh, pitch more. Oh, look at that. This is the view that uh, Yuri Kerman sees. He's now saying, Ooh, I can see Ker Kerbin, the curvature of our home world. So beautiful. Seen for the very first time inside his capsule. That's the uh, second stage is now nearly depleted. We can actually jettison it. And here we go. Decouple. Nice separation there. And let's turn on RCS so that we can drift away further from our second stage. Here's the third stage, which hasn't been activated yet. So I'm gonna... Okay, so now it's ready to be activated. We'll just wait until we reach apoapsis for circularization or burn. Notice how cute those RCS thrusters are. Dude, dude. Okay, just 19 seconds. So after the burn, we can effectively jettison the third stage because that's all it has to do just to place our spacecraft in a good orbit around Kerbin. Five, four, and firing engines. Monitoring the progress of the burn to make sure we have a nice circular Five, orbit. Four, three, two, one. There we go. Looks decently circular enough. Periapsis of 115 and apoapsis of 119. Really, really nice. And congratulations, Yuri Kerman. You have become the very first Kerbin, very first Kerbal to orbit the planet Kerbin. Yay! I mean, once around Kerbin, we need to plan our re-entry. So I'm gonna plan a maneuver over here. bring us down over here near uh, uh, Kerbal Space Port or I mean Kerbal Space Center I hope so okay, I, I'm, I'm using the third stage which should not be so let's decouple that and we shall activate this engine and use it okay in a few seconds from now we will be like a good deorbit burn.
and roughly our Kurtok spacecraft does look a bit like the original Vostok with these RCS tanks all around here and a tiny service module here. Okay. So our entry interface should happen somewhere over here. Then we're going to be doing another burn so that we make sure that we land close to Kerbal Space Center. So I'm just going to do a fast forward here. Before the uh, re-entry animation begins, there's going to be like flames. This we're essentially a meteor now. Yep, very nice. More burn. Bring us closer to KSC there. Yeah, make sure we don't land in the water. We don't want that to happen. Yeah, to aid our... Oh, no more fuel, so let's deploy the parachutes. Where's the other parachute? To help facilitate slowing down. Deploy chute. There we go. So as you can see, there's a dramatic decrease in speed. Look at those mountains, they look so cool. Yeah, there's KSC. A rocket system to slow us down further, because I don't think these chutes are going to blossom until they're about... I don't know, 500. Too bad. Well, we can still try and... Oh, there. Okay, lots of time, lots of time. Okay, let's do it this fast. EVA. So there it is. Go up, go up. And ride the chair. Board the chair. Yay! And now, Yuri will be separating from... Yay! And let's go, let's go, Yuri. Let's fall off and activate our... Deploy our chute. Yay! Oh, head first. Wow. That's neat. <laughs> and we have no way of controlling it. Anyway, we still did it just like how Yuri did it. So we're good to go. Okay, fast forward. Just a few meters now from the ground. Boom. And bam. <laughs> Yay. Oh, are you alive? Yuri, wake up, wake up, Yuri. There he is. Anyway, so there. Yuri has finally made it back to Kerbin to become the first uh, Kerbal to reach or to orbit around Kerb that Kerbin. That's confusing. So that's my way of celebrating the 53rd anniversary of the first human in space. So take care everyone and I hope you enjoyed this little reenactment. Bye bye.